Hello everyone. Today we're looking at the problem count special subsequences, which was question three in weekly contest 430. So just before we start, this video is going to cover a solution using binary search and we'll have the time complexity of n squared log n. There is a better approach to this problem, which is just n squared, which I am not going to cover in this video because I think it's a little harder to intuit about and I kind of prefer this approach and it does pass the test cases. So I will just be talking about this one for this video. So the question reads that we're given an array nums consisting of positive integers. A special subsequence is defined as a sequence of length four represented by indices P, Q, R, S in that order. So P is less than Q, Q is less than R, and R is less than S. And the subsequence has to satisfy the following conditions. So if you take the element at P and the element at R and multiply them, that has to equal taking the element at Q and the element at S and multiplying those. And there must be at least one element between each pair of indices, right? So basically, for any indices that we consider in this pair, they cannot be adjacent. So Q cannot be next to P, R cannot be next to Q, S cannot be next to R. There has to be at least one element in between all of them. So we want to return the number of different special subsequences that we have in nums. So looking at the example 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, we would output 3 because there are three special subsequences in this array. So the first being the elements 0, 2, 4, and 6. You'll see that this corresponds to all 3s. So we can multiply the first two 3s and get 3, these 3s and get 9, and these are equal. Also 1, 3, 5, and 7. Similarly, all 4s, we multiply those, get 16 for both, and then we have 0, 2, 5, and 7, 3, 3, 4, 4, and again, we multiply those, and we get 12 for each side. So whenever you're given your, an equation like this, one thing that's always good to do is try to rearrange it and see if that can help you out at all. And in this case, why would you want to rearrange it? Well, one thing that's a little confusing is that we have an ordered set of indices, right? We know P has to be first, Q has to be second, R has to be third, and S has to be fourth. But you'll see we actually have the zero with one on here, the second here, and then here we have one and three. So it would be kind of helpful to get these in order if we have zero, one, two, three, kind of all on the same side. So how could we do this? Well, let's just try rearranging it. So we could divide this whole side by nums q. Then we'll end over here with this also divided by nums q. Right, and then this side will have just nums s at this point. So these cancel out. Then what we could do is we could divide by this nums r and move it over to this side. So we now have nums p divided by nums q equals nums s over nums r, right? So how does this actually help us? Well, now what we can kind of think about is instead of having to maybe loop through all these at the same time and think about, um, you know, multiplying the pairs together and checking their sums or rather checking their products, what we can do is maybe we can do these in two separate steps, right? What if we can find this value, so take nums p divided by nums q, get all those values that we can, then we could do this separately, right? And we could do nums s divided by nums r and see those values and see if we can find some equality in between those, right? Because if we just tried to do this and brute force it, it should be an O of n to the 4 algorithm. But here we could do O of n squared plus O of n squared. We could try to separate this work out. So we're going to try and work with the concept of ratios in this problem. So the first thing we want to do is we want to iterate through all of the P, Q pairs. And whenever we see a pair, we're going to record the ratio that it gives us by dividing them as well as whatever the value of Q is, or rather, yes, the, the index Q at this point. And you will see why we do this later on. So we're gonna start with our P at zero and our Q at two. And why do we start with Q at two? Remember that all of the indices have to have at least one element in between them. So if we're gonna start P at zero, 
the smallest value that we can have will be at index two for Q. So now let's go through and record some of these ratios. So now we're going to do P divided by Q. So this will be one over three, which will be 0.33. And we're going to record the Q value there. So a value of two. Then we're gonna move forward. Now we have one over four. So let's record 0.25 the Q value of three, and so on and so forth. So I just went through and wrote down all of the ratios that we have, as well as their Q positions. So each of these represents, for example, any pair where we can divide the value and get 0.33, those pairs have a Q value at five. And we know here that the P must be before these values. So we're really just considering the Q values here, and you will see why we do that in a little bit. One thing I want to note is that although most of these arrays are sorted, we are going to need them all to be sorted because we're going to use binary search on these arrays. So what we want to do is just go through and make sure that some of these are not sorted. So here we see this one is not sorted. So let's just update that to four, six, right? The rest of these seem good. So we just need to do an extra step of going through and sorting all these arrays as well. So now what we have done is we've gone through all the possible pairs that P and Q can possibly be. And we've recorded for all those pairs, their ratio, as well as the Q value for each of those pairs. So now what we wanna do is we wanna handle all of the S and R pairs, right? So what will happen here? Well, now we're gonna do another nested for loop, but we're gonna do it for R and S. So in this case, where does R start? Well, R has to be at this element right here. And remember, this is the first possible place we can ever have R, because if P is here, Q has to be here, because we need to have an element. And if Q is here, we have to have an element in between. So this is the first place we could ever have our R value. And if R is here, that means S has to be here because we always have to have a space in between all of our elements. So now what are we going to do? Well, we know based on the formula that we had that we're going to divide S by R in this case. So let's take one divided by R is one third. And we'll see that we have previously saw for our P and Q pairs ratios that are the same that have ended here, right? So do we just take all of these values and add them to our answer and say, okay, well, we have three other pairs. Well, actually, we cannot just take all the values here. And this is where the binary search comes in, right? Remember what this array represents. This represents all the PQ pairs and where they end. But remember, if my R is at four, there has to be at least one space in between this R and the Q, right? So we're going to use these Q values to find only the valid pairs that I can make. And why are certain pairs not valid? Well, I know that my current R is four in this position, right? This is the fourth index. Well, could I make a pair with this element here? Well, I cannot because remember, this is Q right? And my R and my Q cannot be the same, right? Because I know that my Q has to be at least two below wherever R is. So in this case, this is not valid, right? And then also this cannot be valid as a Q either because my R is four and my Q can't be greater than my R. I know it has to be at least less than two of R. So what we're gonna do now is whenever we see a ratio, we're gonna say, okay, well now I'm gonna binary search in this list. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find which other P and Q pairs that I can match up with what I'm looking at now that can make a special subsequence. So in this case, I would binary search for the value R minus two, which is four minus two equals two, right? Because this is the earliest Q value that I can have. So I'd binary search and I would just find this element right here. Everything to the left of this would be valid. So here I would just record one for my answer. 
And basically, we would just continue this cycle. We'd go through all the RS pairs. But in this case, this is the only pair we can actually check. So what we're doing here is basically breaking this complex equation down into two steps. We're going to find all the P and Q pairs first and record their ratios and where they end. Then we're going to look at all the R and S pairs. And if they have similar ratios, we will then binary search in the pairs that we found previously and see which ones we can actually match it up with and then just record that as our answer. So the time complexity here is going to be O of n squared log n. And this n squared comes from the fact that we are actually doing two iterations of n squared, right? We're going through all the P and Q pairs and then all of the R and S pairs. And then what we're going to do is for all the R and S pairs, we're going to do a binary search. So essentially what we're doing is for every iteration, we're going to do a binary search, which gives us O of n squared times log n. So let's hop over to the code and see exactly how this works. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our dictionary of our ratios. And this is where we're going to store all of the ratios we found in our P and Q pairs. So we're going to iterate through all possible values of P as well as all possible values of Q. And in here, Q has to be P plus 2 to start. And this is because we have to have at least one space in between P and Q. So we can never have Q be 1. We can never have Q be 0. Q has to start at at least 2 after P. Then what we do is for all those pairs, we're going to, for the ratio as the key, just add that Q index into our ratios dictionary. Then what we do is just going to go through and sort these because they have to be in order for our binary search to work. Then we go through all the R and S pairs. And similar logic here where we're going to start R at 4. Like we said before, the smallest that R can ever be is 4 because if P is 0 and Q is 2, there has to be another space in between Q and R. So R will always be 4 at the smallest. Similarly, we're going to start S at R plus 2 because there must be a space as well between R and S. Then we're going to calculate the ratio by dividing S by R. And if we've seen this ratio, we're going to do our binary search. So we're going to start with left equals 0. And our right value is the length of that ratio's array minus 1. So while our left is less than or equal to right, we're going to calculate our mid. And we're going to get that Q value from the ratio's array. So if my Q is greater than R minus 2, right? This means that I'm looking at pairs that are too far into the array. The Q is possibly over where my R is or almost where my R is, and this is not valid. So what I have to do is I have to go to the right, decrease my range, and make sure that I'm looking at pairs that appear earlier in the array. Otherwise, I can go and increase my left and search for more pairs that appear farther on. Then after I go through my binary search, I'm going to add to my answer the max of left or zero. It's potentially that uh, left could be negative here. If, for example, there are no valid pairs, you might search all the way to the left and go out of bounds. We just want to record whatever the maximum of the left and zero would be. Then in the end, we just return our answer. So let's submit and make sure that it works. And it does work. So this was a very difficult problem. It had less than 3% acceptance rate in the contest. So if you didn't get it, don't feel bad. I also did not solve it. But just keep practicing. You'll get better. Hopefully this was helpful and it made sense. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.